Bam. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Un Beyond Mindset. I am your host, Marisol Uribe, aka Enfermera Marisol. And today I have someone very special on the show. We connected a while back. Her name is Melissa Bell. She is a personal trainer. <laughs> Unlike any other, she's going to tell you how she differentiates herself from everyone else. So, Mel, what makes you stand out among all the trainers out there? Introduce yourself and welcome. Oh, thank you. Well, first off, thank you for having me on the show. I was like super hyped when you texted me and I was of like, course. yes, I finally made it big time. Um, okay, what makes me different? Well, first off, I'm Melissa Bell. I'm a certified personal trainer. Um, I've been training for give or take about 10 years on and off. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this full time. So that started about two years. No, actually a year and a half ago, give or take. Um, so I've been doing that full time. I would say what makes me different or stand out is I'm very, um, th there's an importance of finding out what actually works for someone's body because not everybody can just go in the weight room and start throwing weights around. And especially when it comes to women and hormones, there's like a proper way to actually figure out how to do that. And for me, that's something I struggled with. So it's become kind of like my niche is finding out like what actually works for each specific person and then giving them the proper program and seeing them thrive. Seeing them thrive. I thrive. love it. So where did you come from? Where did this whole idea of training start to begin with? Um, okay, so I was born and raised in California. And then to be very exact, I'm from like San Fernando Valley. So like Silmar, Bacoima, that kind of area. Um, so I've always been around here in kind of more of like high paced cities, I would say like LA, of course. Um, from a young age, I've always been very into like, I'm so competitive, it's not even funny. And I think when I was younger, it was probably the bad competitive. But I was always in sports, I was in dance, I was even in cheerleading, but I'm from a family of three boys and they are all older than me. So I was just like meant to be the tomboy and I wanted to be a part of everything. Um, and I think training kind of just naturally came to me just because, you know, sports, you obviously you have to train for that. And I was just so used to doing that. And then my personal, like my alone time was me going to the gym. So I'm like, I'm already in this gym all the time. And my friends would always be like, oh, you should train me and da da da. And it was just something I actually, I genuinely enjoy it. So I was like, let's make this a thing. So you're the youngest female yeah. among <laughs> alpha men, I imagine. Yes, very creative, smart, but yes, alpha men for sure. Brilliant. So tell me, are you the most driven individual in your family right now? And if so, what do you think sparked that inside of you? And how can you see yourself insu influencing your family as well and have that like uh, trickle onto the next generation to come? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say we're all, it's funny because we're all so very different. And I will say, like my brothers are more, um, I would say in the artistic field, like one is, he can write novels. The other one is literally an artist. So he will actually draw portraits and he could draw anything you could ever imagine. And then the third one is computer coding and engineering kind of mind. So we're so different. So I think we're thriving in our own ways. But I think for me, why I've been different, or I would say I'm the one like really go getting um, is, I'm the people person. I'm very much into networking. And that's kind of always been my special trait and been different. It's like my dad would be like, you're the social butterfly. And everyone knows that. So from being able to do that, and then obviously get myself into places and rooms that I would never be able to get into, even if I had a college degree, has really set me apart. And then I think, you know, I think I do inspire my family in general, just because I am the youngest. And it's been like, wow, like, holy crap, she actually just like went for it. And then also, I do also have a son. So for me, it's also a big like, setting the example. And I was a very young mom, and I still am technically a young mom. So it's very important for me to be like, you don't have to do the nine to five. You can totally go out of the box and go do something wild. And you can do it even in, you know, circumstances like mine, where it's like a single mom from LA, that's yeah, really, you know, like people do it. Don't get me wrong, but it is a little bit more unheard of. My age group. I'm also, you know, a black female in Los Angeles. 
with no degree, any of that. So this is a lot of like, I've had to really be with the right people and really show that I can provide some kind of service, you know. A commonality of guests that I've had on the Unbion Mindset podcast so Mm -hmm. far is that they are all coached by multi-millionaires, soon to Mm -hmm. be billionaires, uh, some of which may include Grant Cardone, which I know you're Mm -hmm. familiar with, uh, 10X Movement, huge success with his wife, Elena, who Mm -hmm. um, Grant, I hope to have on the show sometime. You will. Manifest. (laughs) Also, I've got Albert Preciado as a popular mentor Mm -hmm. from the Driven events here in Los Angeles as well. Mm -hmm. And so what have you learned growing up, say from mentors who weren't probably the best mentor for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, It could be family or otherwise. And then Mm -hmm. how did you transition into leveling up your mentors? Because I know there's the people that teach it, the people Mm -hmm. that teach it and do it, And then the Mm -hmm. people that don't even have to teach it anymore because they've done it and they've already built a name for themselves. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, You know, interestingly enough, I think when I was younger, just based off, because when I was younger, like, yes, I went to school, but I was such a troublemaker that let's just be real. I did not finish the entirety of school. I wasn't really around those kinds of people. So Uh, mentorship I was in the wrong group I was in the wrong crowd you know just wanted to cause trouble that kind of so that was my mentorship when I was much younger very very early teens um so going from that where I didn't really actually have a mentor I would say really didn't have one kind of switched into like okay, I started working and maybe the guy who owned the business I was working for, like, for example, I used to manage a gym in Los uh, Hollywood, a a CrossFit gym. And the guy, you know, he was a successful business owner and I was also his personal assistant. So at that time it was kind of like, okay, this is my mentor. And he had been in the military for 20 plus years. So it was really like a guy who was like, get it done. I don't care how you do it, but get it done. And that was the mindset. So I think that was my first, like, oh, wow. Okay. I kind of have someone to look to and go, you know what I mean? Like what's the successful action of how to do something, you know, hard. So good example for sure. Yeah. I mean, military background, they train their men top tier, right? Absolutely. And especially like Marines. And he was just like, no playing around, no crying. There's no emotion. So I think that like, you know, it was funny. I was just actually just talking to someone about him because he has been such a big, I would say mentor in my life because also, you know, I'm a female there's emotions that come with that. And especially growing up and I'm a single mom, you know what I mean? I dealt with a lot of things that should have been very emotional, but it was like, I still have to work. I got to get money. I got to, you know, provide and still thrive for success. Um, And he really taught me how to like put those emotions aside and really put, put either anger or sadness into production. Right. That's been a very successful thing for me. Um, And then I think the last of your question is definitely now, like I, really look up to people like Grant Cardone. I'm a huge like TEDx life and things like that. So anyone who really has that mindset, which is really just like step out of the box and do whatever you got to do necessary to get it done. I'm like, that's definitely who I look up to. That's my girl. And that's why we get along so well. Mel is one of those people who, if you disconnect from talking to someone and then you reconnect, it's like you pick up where you left off. And it's, and we challenge each other with questions, right? Mm -hmm. To keep on thinking bigger and getting into that proximity, right? Whether it's your next goal, your next milestone. And speaking of goals, where do you see yourself say a year from now around this time, November? Okay, so from a year from now, okay, let's see. I have a lot. So there's one, I can't say details, which is an exciting thing, exciting problem to have, but I do plan on being, let's just say like, we'll say on the screen, on the big screen. So that's where I'm going right now, which I'm very excited about because as much as I will still be doing in-person training for um, personal training for clients and obviously um, online training, but it's going to be a different kind of clientele, which is very exciting. Um, Also, I will also be launching my like personally made fitness app. So that's really exciting because I kind of got to go through like you know, I kind of got to troubleshoot existing ones and figure that out. And I actually have my brother who's on my team because he does coding. So that works out really well. 
So we're building this beautiful fitness app that kind of like includes everything. I got to survey lots of people who were like, oh, I love this fitness app, but it doesn't have this or this or this. And I kind of got to combine everything. So we're making something that's like, yes, it's a fitness app, but it's also never been done before. And it's, it can be integrated with a lot of things. So um, those are the two big things. Mel, that was in my mind when you were describing your brothers. How can we turn our me thinking to we thinking, right? So it's about pooling all these strong suits from everybody Mm -hmm. and collaborating and seeing how we can all grow together. Yeah, no, exactly. So, and that's funny because literally it was like the app came up and I was like, okay, cool. There's me doing the thing. And then my brother's going to code. And then my other brother does copywriting for it. And then the other brother is actually the artistic side of it. So it was like, how do you take the Bell family and just make it into like a monstrosity empire? And so that's going to be our first project. But there's no Oh, I'm so excited. That's (laughs) so perfect. You guys, everyone who I bring on the show is either making it or about to make it to that (laughs) Unbiyan. So keep listening. Keep listening yeah. on. So what does having an Unbion mindset mean to you? Kind of what I said earlier, which is like doing whatever you got to do necessary. It's it's doing the work that no one would even think like they, they don't want to do. You know what I mean? It's working those outrageous hours. It's waking up at three in the morning and going to train clients and getting, you know, being able to see 17 clients. And sometimes that means, 17 hour days. It is almost doing everything opposite of what the average person does or what we're obviously taught in school to do. Um, And I've just kind of been able to see that like, okay, here's people who maybe they are successful, don't get me wrong. And of course they have families and they have houses and things like that. But when you always kind of ask them like, what was your purpose? Or like, what would you want to do? It's never what they're actually doing right now. And so for me, it was like, okay, I don't want to do that. And then being connected with people like you and you know what I mean? Looking up to people like Grant Cardone, it's like the mindset is quit whining and get it done and lay it down and you need to stay on target. And that's really like your own personal, you know, ethics of keeping yourself on track. So I think it's a lot of things, but really it's just kind of like get it done no matter what really. You said a couple of things that I want to stress on. Number one, the fact that you see clients at three, four, five a.m. and that your part, day yeah. doesn't finish until like way hours of the day, <laughs> that just goes to show that grind, that determination, that doing things that other people would say is maybe out of the ordinary, right? Right. That they may not want to do. Right. But you see that as a temporary thing, whereas now you already crafted this future where you don't have to do that anymore. But it's right. something that that had to happen so that, say, you could raise money, you can be more established with testimonials, mm-hmm. um, whatever it is. Right? right. But you have to do what others are not willing to do. But it's not yeah. necessarily like we don't have to do that comparison thing like just because Mel's doing that doesn't mean that you need to do that it's more of if it meets your goals if it suits your needs so Mel has seen that as a sacrifice but a temporary one to then transform into something greater right and you're involving your family now which is fantastic and another point you mentioned besides that grit and work ethic that I wanted to honor Uh, You also mentioned about how someone may not necessarily have that same mindset, right? Maybe their upbringing was different and uh, how people paint their story on social media isn't necessarily the real one at home. And say, when when you are asked, hey, are you doing what you want to do for a living? And people say no, that's your opportunity to really reassess your whole life structure, look into the life of someone else and take the good, but also remember that there's some bad, there's some bad days, there's some bad moments, but that doesn't define you. That's just temporary. And so hopefully these tools equip you to adjust your mindset. And what would you say, Mel, to those single moms out there who put up their kids as as an excuse? Oh, okay. I'm not going to 
rattle rattle any feathers but um you know i think it depends you know it's one of those things that it's so easy to do that and it's like obviously i can understand i can see where that person's come from where they oh i can't do that because i have a baby or like oh i can't make that meeting and they just automatically say no but it's it's one of those like unless you figure it out which there's plenty of, uh, here's the number one rule for me there is always a solution i don't care how it might be wild it might be so out of the ordinary but there's always a solution so you know what i mean there's days where it's like my son was what maybe six months old and it's like i have to be at work or i have to do this and it was like i had to come up with some crazy solutions but i got it done just because it had to get done yeah. and the longer that you kind of use your children in any way as an excuse of either not be happy, not be healthy, not be productive, or, you know, starting your business or whatever it may be is like, you're really setting yourself up for that is your lifetime is going to be, you didn't get these things done. And sure, maybe your children will be happy. But it's kind of like you always have to look at the, what's the viewpoint of your children is when they get older, they want to go, my parent is happy. And my parent you know, went the extra mile. So they were, you know, whatever, they met their goals in some kind of way. So I think overall, it's really just like, you kind of, again, have to reassess and be like, is this the life I want to have for the next 20, 30 years? If it's not, then you better start changing some stuff. And it's just kind of comes down to that. People overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they could do in five years. Mm -hmm. So your answer to say if you're listening or watching on YouTube, where do you see yourself in five years? That's something asked sometimes in er interviews, uh, right, to get a job. But ask yourself in terms of your life, right, what you want to see when you wake up, when you go outside. Where do you want to be? What city? What state? Uh, with what mm -hmm. kind of partner, right? So sometimes it helps to plan all this and write it down. So that you do manifest it, like like Mel was saying. Yeah, no, definitely. And I would just say on that, like a little bit of the topic to close it out is um, kind of what you said earlier is like, I was willing to do 17 hour days for almost basically, it's been exactly a year. I've been doing 17 hour days for the most part. I have probably done two to three years worth of work in this one year. And it's like, that was worth it. Cause now I'm at a point where I'm like, oh, wow. I really like looking at January. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. The next chapter. <laughs> so you really, if you really look at every, you know, whether you're a personal trainer or something else, if you're willing to sacrifice a year, you know what I mean? Like there's time is really just an idea of how long things should take. It's not an actual fact of like, it has to take you five years to get to this goal. So I think that's kind of also a cool thing is like, it is totally up to you. And if you want to like, get things done fast well then you better just some, sacrifice some time and do it now and then you can kind of live a life where you're like oh cool i don't have to be here at this time and i can wake up when i want and you know structure your base business how to grow exactly and at that point when you reassess and look back at your life you will say i deserve this because of what i did x y and z last year or two years ago mm -hmm. and these are incremental steps like all the efforts and sacrifices that you do say today with a diet change you may not see it right away but you'll see it on the scale next time you measure yourself you measure your weight mm -hmm. right so thanks so much for your time now i know we're approaching already the end of the interview um please follow her i will link her information down in the description but go ahead and tell us the best way to reach out to you um the best way is uh instagram honestly i mean you can totally just dm me directly i will see it and then also i will provide my business email as well if you want to go that route but i'm very easy to talk to love hearing from people so like don't be shy even if you just have a question so there you go what's your handle mel it's at fit with period mel well, there you have it everyone thank you for listening to the un beyond mindset podcast and share the show to support and tell us in the comments what your biggest takeaway was thank you guys for watching slash listening and have a great day bye